Okay, so um, the time now is 8.33 and um, welcome back everyone. Eric, Natalie, uh, Mahmoud, Joshua, and Shakur. Um, I'm expecting about probably nine students. So I'm just going to share my screen. So this is 1A Google Classroom Pre-Calculus, 1A. Uh, so now this is the coursework. You know, I usually come to this place so that we will know where we stand at every point in time. So this is, if we scroll down a little bit, we will discover that we are right here. We are right here. Unit five, which is sequences and series and limits. And then if you look at this closely, I'm gonna allow you to read it by yourself. It's already on Google Classroom, but I just want to highlight that the, um, what State of Maryland wants us to learn is to apply the concepts of limits to understand and describe the behavior of functions. So this is one thing we must learn. And then we have to use real world situations to model mathematical uh, problems. And then here is the standard. The standard that we expected to cover is right here. So I'm gonna let you read it by yourself, but I just want you to know that this is where we are. Now, by the time we are done with uh, sequences, limits, sequences, series, and limits, we are going to start analytic geometry. So having said that, so we are going to do a quick warm up, very quick warm up, and it's going to be super easy. So I'm just going to draw a rectangular line, and then I will ask you to do two things. One is to find the perimeter of the lawn, and secondly, to find the area of the lawn. Okay, so first, this is the warm up. Please make sure you write your full name, class period, date. The topic is going to be introduction to limits. Okay, so now here's the warm up. Find the area and perimeter, area and perimeter, hold on. Um, please correct any wrong spelling, please. Perimeter of a rectangular lawn. Here is the rectangular lawn right here. And this side is 10. Uh, you can call it 10 meters. And this side is 6 meters. Find the area and the perimeter of a rectangular lawn. Okay. 10 meters, so you have about uh, two, two minutes. I'm gonna give you three minutes. Okay, so time due at what time? Time now is 8.39, so plus three minutes is going to be 8.43, 8.43 a.m. You have two more minutes, one more minute, about 30 more seconds. Okay, um, time now is uh, 8.43, ladies and gentlemen. So let's quickly review what you just did right now and see um, how it works out. So who has a solution for us? Participation is required, ladies and gentlemen. Um, for the area, you just do Hold on, hold on. I'm just gonna write your answer and then we take it from there. Okay, uh, so yeah. first name, please. Joshua. Joshua said, okay, go ahead, Joshua. I got 60. You got 60 for area? Yeah. Area equal to 60. Is it 60 meters or 60 meters squared? 60 meters squared. Okay, 60 meters squared. Okay, thank you. Um, who else? I'm not saying that he's right or wrong. I just wrote down exactly what he, he said, and then we shall come back to it. Now, how about perimeter? Someone else. What's the perimeter? Oh, well, I got 32 meters. Uh, perimeter. Uh, first name, please. Mahmoud. Mahmoud. Okay, so perimeter, is it uh, 32 meters squared or 32 meters? 32 meters. 32 meters, okay. Now, please, ladies and gentlemen, so now look at what these uh, two gentlemen said. 
do you agree with, do you disagree with any of the solutions? If you disagree, please say, I disagree because then you give us your reason. If you agree, say yes. Somebody has to, apart from the people that gave the answer, somebody has to confirm what they also got. Everybody should get something. It doesn't matter whether what you got, don't bother about whether it's right or wrong. You must have a solution. Chioma, what did you get in perimeter? For the perimeter, I got 32. Okay. Did you say 36 or 32? 32. Okay, good. Now, thank you. So now let's find out how these numbers came about. So now I'm going to go uh, with um, Joshua first. How did you get your area? Uh, I did 10 times six. So how did you get, how, why, why 10 times six? Because those are the two, those are the two sides you have to multiply to get the area of the whole rectangle. So, so which means what formula did you use, if I may rephrase? Oh, well, I don't exactly remember the formula. I just know. Okay. So who, who remembers the formula for area? That's fair enough. Area equals length times width. Okay, very good. So now that's where we are going to start. So we are going to start with area equal to length times width. Joshua, does that tally with what you had in mind? Yeah. I... Okay, so that's the formula. So now what he said is he just multiplied the length is 10 meters multiplied by the width, six meters. And then 10 times six is he got 60 meter times meter. That's meter squared. All right. So now let's check that out as correct. Now, who gave us the um, solution for perimeter? What formula do you did you use? I used um, perimeter equals length plus length plus width plus width. Okay, hold on. Let me write it down. Perimeter equal to length plus what? Plus length plus width plus width. Plus width plus width. Okay. Is there another way of rewriting this very formula? Uh, two times length plus two times width. Okay, 2L plus 2W, and that's perimeter. Okay, now let's check out the, um, let's check out. So we have to note these two formulas. Note this one and also note this one, okay? So now let's substitute the number. So what's the length? Length is two times what? Length is what? I need response from Ten. someone. What? 10. 10, okay. And then plus two, what's the width again? Six. Six, okay. So now, um, what mathematical concept did you use to evaluate it? Or would you use to evaluate this one? What I just wrote. There is this thing they told me, it's called PEMDAS. Don't you think PEMDAS applies here? Yeah. Okay, so, so PEMDAS says that you have to do multiplication first. So you do two times 10 is, two times 10. I need response very quickly. 20. 20, and then? Two times six? 12. 12. 12. Okay, so, and then when you add six and um, six and 12, I'm sorry, 12 and 20, that gives us perimeter to be 32 meters. Okay. Now, why is this very, very important for us? Why is this very important for us? Do we ever get a, a rectangular lawn in our yard, in the field and stuff like that? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, good. So we can always get a rectangular lawn. We can also get a lawn that has different other shapes. But there is a reason why this is very important for us. And that is what brings us to the topic limits. Limits. Now, now what's the objective? Now, let's talk about the objective before we go deeper into the concepts. So the objective for trying to learn limits is to enable us understand and analyze real world situations that limits can be used to resolve. So if you have a real world situation in construction, in buildings, in anything at all, 
And uh, while trying to solve that real world situation, you just apply the concept of limits to analyze it and solve it. And it becomes valid and it becomes acceptable. So understand the concept of limits, understand how to apply the concept of limits to real world situations, okay? So now this time around, we are going to use the same scenario that we just created in order to introduce our limits. So all I'm going to do is I will, re I will redraw the diagram, still rectangular lawn. So we can call our subtopic right now, finding a rectangle of a maximum area, finding a rectangle of a maximum area. So that's our subtopic, finding a rectangle a rectangle of uh, maximum area of maximum. What's another word for maximum? Hello, I need help. You know, you guys, your English is very good. So what's the maximum word for area? Not area, max, uh, another word for maximum. Like greatest. The maybe. greatest, thank you. The greatest value area you can get from a rectangle. The greatest value area you can get from a rectangle. So that's our goal right now. So now let's just redraw our rectangular lawn again. So let's just draw a rectangular lawn, the same thing that we drew, but this time around, we are just going to label it as length and width, length and um, width. Now we have a scenario where the length, where the area of this rectangular lawn also equals to its perimeter, where the area also equals to the perimeter. So now the question is going to be, uh, find the dimensions of a rectangular lawn with perimeter 25 inches that yields the maximum area. So find the dimensions, dimensions, please correct any wrong spelling, dimensions, um of a rectangle with perimeter perimeter to be 24 inches so which yields the maximum area if you like you can put it greatest area maximum area okay so that's that's our goal right now and um remember in our warm up Somebody gave us a formula for, so now let's find a solution to this problem. And this is an activity we are going to do right now. So now the solution is going to be, so somebody gave us the um, perimeter formula again. Apart from that person that gave us the perimeter, I need someone else to repeat that uh, formula for me. P equal to? 2L plus 2W. 2L plus 2W. Okay, in other words, we can also write, we just flip out the formula, uh, change the formula direction. We can also write 2L plus 2W is equal to perimeter. Now, looking at this uh, example right now, so they gave us the perimeter to be, complete the sentence. Hello? 24. 24. So we can just write that 2L plus 2W is equal to 24. Now. Look at what is very, very important here. They say maximum area. Maximum, this very maximum area is very, very important. The greatest area, which means there could be some area that might not be as um, great as the other ones or as large as the other ones. Okay, so we got that. Now we can call this equation one. We can call this equation one. We can call this equation one. Now let's try to, for us to get the maximum area, we need to do what? We need to also get the area of this very lawn. We don't know the area because we, we don't have the, they, they actually want us to find the dimensions, but we don't, they didn't give, they give us any other numerical value. So, but we, at least there is something what we know, which is area of a triangle formula is what? Area of triangle is what? 24. Uh, no, I mean formula. Let's write the formula first. Oh, okay. Uh, length times width. Length times width. So length times width. 
is the area formula. Remember, the problem says find the dimensions. So we're actually looking for dimensions somehow. We're actually looking for dimensions. So, and then we don't know the area, but one thing that we know is they said maximum area, maximum area. So we can just call this equation two. We can just call this equation two, all right? So now we can, we may examine equation one and two and use it to find the maximum area. So let's try to look at equation one. If we want to get the length of equation one, what do you think we should do? Everybody think about it. I'm gonna give you about three, three, uh, 30 seconds. Think about it. If we want to find the length, the length, you're you are finding just one variable. So what shall we do? You have 30 seconds to think about it and then I need a response. Okay, so who has an idea for us? If we want to find the length, using equation one, what do you think we, we should do? No, right, okay, somebody type something using the chart, somebody, so find what values go into 24 and gives you a whole number. Okay, that's a good idea. So, but, but he said, find what values go in, goes into 24 and gives us a whole number. But that does not necessarily mean that for you to get an area of any figure that you must have a whole number. So what happens to the other numbers that are not whole number? Will it give us area as well? Okay. So that's a good idea. Next person. So let's try to manipulate. Let's try to manipulate this formula a little bit mathematically. Let's try to manipulate this formula mathematically. So if we want to solve for the length, what shall we do? Can we, let me rephrase the question. Can we just uh, rewrite the equation in such a way that L, the length will be on one side? Yes or no? Can we do that? Yeah, if you do. Yes, okay, you said yes. So what shall we do in order to accomplish that? Uh, do minus two W and have it on the right side of P. Okay, so he's suggesting we should do uh, two L, plus two W minus two W equal to um, 24 minus two W. Okay, so my two W minus two W gives us what? Zero. Zero. And then what's next? Remember, we are not done yet. We are looking for L, just L. You could divide two by both sides. Uh, you divide both sides by two. Does that make more sense? Yeah. So just write the process, divide both sides by two. Remember when you are trying to show your work, you have to also justify whatever mathematical step you have taken. So he said we should do two L divide by two equal to um, 24 divide by two minus two L, no two W divide by two. Okay, so now let's perform the division. Let's perform the division. Two divided by two, I need a chorus answer. Two divided by two, 1,000, is that correct? One. One, all right. Uh, then 24 divided by two, oh. 12. Next person, Eric, you, got, you have to answer this one. Eric, two divided by two as well. One. One. So we, we ended up getting a third equation right here. And then once we got our third equation, so uh, let me help you out and give you the next step. So the next step is we substitute equation three into equation one. So we just make a substitution, equation three into equation one. So write um, substitute uh, three, equation three, into, I'm sorry, I, I wanted to say equation two, into equation two. So that means any place we see uh, L, we just put 12 minus W. Any place we see L, we just put 12 minus W. Okay, so now let's do that. I'm gonna give you um, 30 seconds to do that. Any place you see L, you just put 12 minus W. So you are going to tell me the next, a uh, statement to write. So I'm going to write area, area equal to uh, what? Length times width. 
Wait, no. 12 minus W times W. Okay. 12. He said we should just write 12 minus W multiply by W. Multiply by W. And that's correct. So that's a proper substitution right there. So now what do we do next? What do we do next? Can we expand it? Yes or no? Can we expand the right hand side? Natalie, are you still in this class? Yes, I'm here. All right, very good. So can we expand uh, the expression, this one? Yeah, you can do distributive property. Perfecto, perfect, perfect. So she said, use uh, distributive. So I want everybody to use that. And let's see what we have on the right side. So she said, use distributive property. So I want everybody to do that. You have 30 seconds. I'm gonna call another person who haven't I heard his voice oh, or her voice. Um, Mahmoud, have you said something? Uh, yeah, but what do you, I can okay. say. So now use distributive property, what do you get as your solution? 12 W minus W squared. Okay, so our area is gonna be 12, w minus w squared okay thank you thank you guys thank you guys now here's here's the magic here's the here's the magic we are going to perform right now but this our magic is mathematically verifiable so i want you to verify it by yourself i want you to verify it by yourself so we just got this we are going to use this formula so I am going to create a table for you right now. And then you use your calculator to fill in that table. And then we we'll see what the result is going to give us. You are the one who is going to make, be making this verification. But I want you to use your um, calculator to do that. Use calculator very quickly. Uh, let me just um, finish creating the table. And then you take it from there. Okay, so um, the first one is our W. So we are going to select some values for W. So let's select 5.0, 5.5, uh, then 5.9, 5.9, and then 6.0, 6.1, and then 6.5 and uh, 7.0 let's stop at this so here is the area the area is going to be area here's the formula you are going to use this formula this very formula so 12 w multiply uh, minus w squared that's what you are going to use for your area so now in each case in each case all you need to do is plug in the value of W into the area formula and then write the value right here. And please write two places of decimal, okay? Please write two places of decimal so that uh, we will be able to uh, see the differences in the various numbers we may get, okay? So I'm gonna give you how many minutes, like how many minutes do you think will be enough? Use calculator. So uh, let's say 30 seconds, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. So one minute, two minutes, three minutes, three and a half minutes. Use calculator, punch in the number. So the three minutes is going to be due at 9.09. No, I'm sorry, 9, um, 9.13. Due at 9.13 a.m. Please write two places of decimal. Write please, uh, two places of decimal. You have one more minute, ladies and gentlemen. Now, each and every one of you, you are going to give me one value for each of the um, spaces that needs to be filled. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to call the names at the way they appear on my screen. So if I call you, you give me an answer for one. I call the next person, um, you give me the the other answer. Then then we fill up the gap. You have about 30 more seconds. Okay, are we ready? 20 seconds, 10 seconds, five, zero. So now let's go. Um, Chioma, go ahead. What's the value of the area when the width is five? 
two places of decimal? Oh, I got negative one. I don't know if I'm right. You got negative one? Did you say negative one? Yeah, I might be wrong. Okay, who agrees with Chama? If you agree, say yes. If you disagree, uh, say I disagree, then you give us your answer. Right now, there's no right, right or wrong answer. If it's wrong, we fix it. If it's right, we acknowledge it. Yeah. Next person, Mahmoud, go. What do you get as five? When when uh, w, uh, w is five? Uh, five or 5.5? Five, five. When W is five. So what's the area? Okay. Uh, 35. 35. Okay, 35. I said give us two places of decimal. So that should be 35.00. Okay, so now let's let's uh, because uh, Chioma said it might be wrong. So now let's see how we got that thirty-five. So all we need to do is we just plug in our area is equal to you see the formula is twelve. So we just write twelve multiplied by five, which is uh, the width, which is the width uh, five, and then minus. Uh, w is also five, so you just say five, uh, what? Five squared, okay? So five squared is 25. This is uh, 25 right here, minus five times five, uh, five times 12 is, five times 12 is? 60. 60 minus 25, that gives us 35. So that's correct. So now next person, um, Eric, What's a 5.5? .5? The area? 35.75. 35.75. Thank you. So we have 35.75. Next person, um, Joshua, go ahead. 5.9. What would that be? 35.99. 35.99. Next person. Let's get back to Chioma. Chioma, did you do six? Uh, Sorry, okay. three, did you do six? Again. Did you evaluate six when it is six? Okay, Shako, go. What is uh, when the weight is six? What is that? Shako, it looks like Shako typed something. So let's go. Uh, if your mic is not working, he typed uh, 36. So he gave us an answer via chat and he said 36. Point zero zero. So now let's fill in the rest of it. The rest of it is 35, 35.99. The other one is uh, 35.75, 35.75. And then the last one is 35, 35, zero, zero. So now, now look at what we just did right now. Look at the value. Now here's the question. Did we get exactly the same area for all of them? No, but there were similar ones. So we did not get exactly the same area. So which means, which means in the same rectangle, you can get different areas out of it. That's what it means. In the same amount of rectangle, you can get different areas. Now look at the value. So which value is the greatest, is the greatest value? Greatest area? 36. 36. So 36 is the greatest area among all the areas that we got. So that means that's our maximum area. That's our maximum area. So now what value of width gives us the maximum area? Six. 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 So now that takes us to the concept of limits. So in terms of limit terminology, the way it is said, so that all mathematicians and scientists across the world will understand what we are talking about is, we can say the limit of area, the limit of area, area as the width approaches six, the limit of area as width approaches six is equal to 36 the limit of area as W approaches six. So let's write it down. Let's write it down. Um, the, this is very important. The limit of area as W, which is the width, approaches six. Approaches uh, six is 36. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, you can see even when you had a wider width, which is seven. 
seven is greater than six, you had a lower area. That means if you buy a plot of land, if you buy a plot of land which you want to uh, build your school or house or whatever, or yard, the way you select your area will affect whether you are going to maximize your plot of land or you cut yourself short. If you use like, if you use uh, the width of seven, eventually you, the area of your plot of land is going to be 35 meters squared. If you use the, uh, the width of six, the, your area is going to be 30, 36 meters squared. So just by the number you select determines whether you are going to cut yourself short or you are going to maximize the space. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. All right. So now let's look at, now, now that we see what we just did, now let's look at how um, Disney World explained the same thing that we just did. So I'm going to uh, share a video right now. Um, it's a cartoon. So let's see how they did the same thing or they explained the same concept. So um, this video, not necessarily, it wasn't really made by Disney World, but it explains something. Okay. Uh, you see, this is uh, my secret math tutor made this video and it's on the topic calculus and the limit of a function. So now let's see what they said. general sense, limits allow us to determine what value a function is approaching when we use a particular input. Not necessarily what the function gives us as an output, but rather what value it's getting arbitrarily close to. Let's explain limits using an analogy. Suppose you are watching TV and start getting a massive craving for pizza. Fortunately, you just happen to have some leftover pizza in the kitchen. So you get it from the couch and start heading towards the fridge. In this instance, if someone were to describe where you are going, they would say you are approaching the fridge. They would be confident in their description because as you keep walking, you are getting closer and closer to where the fridge is located. This example is the same thing we want to do with functions. When we take the limit of a function, we are describing where they are going. Let's see an example of this with the function 3x squared minus 1. For this function, I'm really curious what value the function is approaching as I use x values close to the number 2. Let's see this by using some inputs like 1.9, 1.99, and 1.999. When I use these, I get values such as 9.83, 10.8803, and 10.988003. From these values, it appears that the function is approaching 11. So we say that the limit of the function as x approaches 2 is 11. Remember, what I'm really saying here is that we can get arbitrarily close to the number 11. I just have to pick values that are sufficiently close to 2 in order to do it. Now at this point you might be thinking, that's fantastic, but couldn't you have also found the limit simply by plugging 2 into the function? Wouldn't that also give you 11? In this instance, the answer is yes. But the focus with the limit should be on what value it's approaching, and there are some functions where you simply can't plug in a number to find the limit. In other words, they are not always the same. Let's cover this by going back to our pizza analogy. Like before, you've been struck with a craving for pizza. So you are headed towards the fridge for a quick snack. Now, in one scenario, the fridge is there, loaded with pizza, and you can easily satisfy your craving for pepperoni. But in an alternate scenario, the fridge is gone, possibly stolen by pizza craving ninjas, and you are left empty handed. Even though both of these situations are completely different, your behavior leading up to them is exactly the same. In either case, you are still approaching the fridge. This is the key difference with limits. They are used to describe what the value a function is approaching. They are not used to describe the value the function actually reaches. Let's see how this works with yet another function. Let's go ahead and use x squared minus 4 all divided by x minus 2. Like before, we are interested in what value the function approaches as we use x values close to 2. Let's go ahead and choose some inputs like 1.9, 1.99, and 1.999. When we use these, we get values of 3.9, 3.99, and 3.999. From these, it appears that the function is approaching 4. 
So again, we say that the limit of the function as x approaches 2 is 4. If you try and find this value by instead plugging in 2, something strange happens. When you plug 2 into the function, you get 0 divided by 0. This shows that the function doesn't actually ever get to 4. In fact, a quick look at the graph shows a hole right where 4 is. Despite the hole, the behavior of the function leading up to it is the same. Since the behavior is the same, we still say that the limit of the function as x approaches 2 is 4, even though it never actually gets there. Hopefully both of these examples really highlight how limits focus on the behavior of a function, what they get arbitrarily close to. One thing we still have left to cover is what it exactly means when we say that a function gets arbitrarily close to a value. But don't worry, we'll be able to tackle that tricky problem in the next video when we introduce epsilon and delta. Thanks for watching. Hey, did you enjoy this video? Don't forget to like it and then subscribe to my channel. If you want to know more about limits, you can watch a few examples here. You can also move on to my next lecture video where I talk about the precise definition of a limit using epsilon and delta. For some of my other videos, don't forget to visit my website, mysecretmathtutor.com. Thanks again for watching. Okay, guys. Uh, let's come back together. By the way, our subject is still our subject is still uh, pre-calculus and pre means we are just introducing ourselves gradually to calculus and the book, our book is still pre-calculus with limits. You can see that limits is a very important concept. That's why it's part of this very book. Pre-calculus with limits. And then they have explained to us what a uh, limit means so limits try to um explain or identify what happens as you approach a certain value whether you are approaching it from the right or you're approaching it from the left or whatever okay so limit tells us what happens as you approach a certain value so um I'm going to give you something to do, but before I do that, let me uh, go back to what we were um, explaining before. You can see, you can see as we as we move closer to six by increasing it gradually, like 0 0.5, 0 0.4, point, uh, you know. So you can see as you move closer to six, this value increases. The area increases. The area increases. On the other hand. Once you hit the maximum, once you hit the maximum, as you move away from the maximum, the maximum is six. As you move away from the maximum, then the value um, kind of reduces. It reduces. So basically, it is something that looks like this. It looks like our shape, our shape is going to look something like this. If we plot this thing, by the way, this equation now is, is a quadratic. This is a quadratic equation. So this is a quadratic equation. Is that correct? This is a quadratic equation. And if it's a quadratic equation, so it should give us a parabola. So this is, uh, you can call this as the area and you can call this side as the, as the width. Of course, this is your Y, this is your X. So you had something that looks like this. So this point is your peak, the peak area, the maximum value. So as the number increases from zero here, and then you had five, uh, you had all these other numbers. The screen is it, not showing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, hold on, please. Um, okay, here's what I was trying to explain. So I just drew, a quadratic equation and I drew a graph. So now in this graph, you can see at the peak, this is where you have the maximum area, which is uh, 36 meters uh, squared. And this is six. So as you get to six, it increases. As you move away from six, it decreases, okay? So we have about 25 minutes. So I'm just going to give you a task, just one task. And it is going to contain the, the whole 
the same thing, but you are going to follow this exact same process that we've just done right now. So um, I'll just call it task. And then, uh, so I will write the question as follows. Find, find the dimensions, find the dimensions of a triangle, I'm sorry, of a rectangle, of a rectangle with perimeter, with perimeter 52 inches that yields the maximum area, okay? That yields the maximum area. So you are basically going to follow the same steps that we just did right now. Uh, instead of uh, using a uh, perimeter to be 24, you are using perimeter to be 52. So you have between now and uh, end of class period to finish it. And I'm, I'm standing by just in case you have a question, but it's due at the end of the class period. Excuse me. Yes. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. In your, in your first equation, 2L plus 2W equals to 24. Yes. You said we should move the, the 24 to the right and the 2L plus W to the left, right? Yes, I said you can rewrite it that way. So it's the same thing. You don't really have to move it to get your L. No, I'm just wondering why you didn't change the sign when you moved the equation to the other side. Okay. Um, I did not move a particular term. I moved the entire thing. So when you move the entire thing, you you, you should not change the sign. Now let's 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 get back. This is a very good question. Though no question is uh, bad, but this one needs helps us to explain something else. Now we have that our length per perimeter is equal to two L plus two W, right? Okay. Now look at it this way. Look at it this way. What did I just do? Okay, look at it this way. I wanted to draw a line. I wanted to draw a line. So now look at it this way. You can have that six is equal to two times three. True or false? Is two equal to two times three? So if that yes. is true, if that is true, is two times three also equal to six? Yes. Okay, so you can just flip, you can just flip um two numbers change their position in in an equal to sign 